So as you probably know, Ben Shapiro has been a, you know, just since October 7th, just on a roll in terms of expressing his support for Israel, expressing his disdain uh, uh, for, for the for Hamas, uh, showing them to be the evil that they are, um, uh, standing up against the enemies of, of Western civilization. He has been as good as it gets on this particular issue. Uh, and I've, I've supported him. I've told him that I support him. Um, and I have, um, and I have uh, I told you, and, and uh, at least posted this on Twitter, uh, retweeted some of his posts and, and supported him. He has done some excellent, excellent uh, lectures uh, in Oxford and at Cambridge and elsewhere where he has defended Israel and done a very good job at it. Uh, ben Shapiro is super smart and super sharp and super quick, and uh, he does a good job when it comes to this. Uh, during, I guess, uh, you know, during some of these, uh, well, not everybody, put it this way, not everybody at the Daily Wire has been as passionate, has, uh, has, 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 has risen uh, kind of uh, to this occasion in quite the way Ben Shapiro has. I've not been watching Matt Walsh or, 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 or some of the others to see what their commentary has been like on this issue, but I can't imagine that uh, it has been as uh, strong and as supportive of Israel as Ben's has. But I do know that one person in particular at the Daily Wire has not, and that is, uh, has not been, uh, has been counter, if you will, to, to Ben Shapiro, and that is Candace Owen. Candace has, since uh, October 7th, been committed to a, uh, you know, the both sides of this issue. Israel is pretty bad to Israel. She has argued is an apartheid state. Israel does violate the rights. And, you know, maybe, maybe there, there, there really is something to the Palestinian grievances. Uh, yeah, what happened on October 7th is, is horrific, but what Israel does is horrific too. The kind of moral equivalency that you see on the left, Candace Owen has embraced that same moral equivalency uh, on the right and has been a voice for that. I, I mean, this is not surprising. Candace Owen has been horrible and awful um, for a long time, for a very long time. Um, and uh, she's been terrible in Ukraine. Uh, she was terrible on COVID and vaccinations. Uh, she's just been awful uh, in, in, in pharmaceutical companies. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 if I was running Daily Wire, I would have fired her a long time ago. But of course, they can't. I mean, they, they do have to. They, they, they probably have a contract where they can't. Um, but but she, she's particularly bad on, on issues that, uh, on many issues, that Ben Shapiro, I think, is particularly good on. Um, and um, so Ben Shapiro in, it was asked about Candace Owen on some of these talks that he's giving as he's traveling around out there. And he criticized her, right? He, he basically said that he, he, he thought what she was saying was wrong and, and he wished he hadn't, she hadn't said it and, and that she was, she was completely off base on these issues and in particular with regard to the Israel thing. But I don't think that was the only issue he has with her. He, he's, he's good on Ukraine and, 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 uh, and on other issues as well, and they disagree on them. But I think this Israel issue is particularly sensitive for, for uh, Ben, uh, as I think it should be, not just because he's, he's a real Jew, but because I think he understands, I certainly understand, maybe more than him on this, that this really is a battle for the soul of the West. This really is a battle about Western civilization, just like 9-11 was in spite of what Bin Laden says. Anyway, Candace responded to this, or at least it was interpreted that she responded to this, by quoting scripture. So she wrote, quote, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You might want to remember that, all you greedy businessmen out there and finance guys who might be listening to this show. 
She follows up that post with Christ is king. Now, what is she saying here? She's saying, you know, yeah, I'm being criticized, but I'm in the right. Blessed am I for being criticized. And, and she says, I don't care about money. I don't care about losing subscribers. I am with right, with justice, with God. And I'm going to say the truth in the face of Ben Shapiro or whoever else there is. Now, she might claim she wasn't talking about Ben, but Ben certainly think, thought she was talking about him. So Ben quote tweets, retweets her and says, Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. Now, no, she also stuck in there, you know, the thing about the thing about uh, Christ is king, Ben is Jewish. You know, this is what happens when somebody like Ben allies himself with the religious Christian right. They won't tolerate him long term. They won't like him. They won't. They won't because Judaism is wrong and, and, and Judaism is false and Judaism is it's from their perspective, the Jews either convert to Christianity or they go to hell when the Messiah comes back, when Jesus comes back. I mean, I'm reading Dominion right now, which is a really interesting book. So I'll be commenting on Dominion because, you know, I and his elites quoted it and it's been quoted elsewhere. Uh, so I will, I, will come, I, I will talk a lot about Dominion in the weeks to come, as, particularly when I finish it. But in Dominion, it's, it's pretty clear that, that what Christianity is, is a re particularly once Paul gets involved, what Christianity is is a rejection of Judaism and, 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 a, and, a, and an attitude of once the Messiah has come, once Christ has come, once the sons of God has come, Judaism must be repudiated completely. Judaism is way too, uh, you know, a... Uh, 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 it's, it, it's uh, 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 what is the word? It, it's too tribal. It's too, um, it, 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 it's too uh, exclus ex exclusive. Too exclusive. And that's the, you know, and, and, and therefore Judaism needs to be gone because now Christianity, the true ch religion, is here. And it's universal, of course. Anyway, so she's sticking it to Ben, uh, and I'm sure at the sidelines, Matt Walsh and, and, uh, and Knowles at least somewhat chewing you on. I, I, I don't doubt this. This is Candace Owens' response to Ben. You've been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now. Unhinged. And we have all... This suggests that she's not just speaking for herself, but maybe for the other Christians in the group. And we have all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross a certain line. And when you come for scripture and read yourself into it, I will not tolerate it. Wow. There's, uh, there's the Christian lion in her. Anyway, I don't know how this is going to get resolved. I don't think this is a this is a, a little spat. I think this goes to the heart of Ben's ideology and to the heart of Candace's and others at the Daily Wire's ideology. Um, Christianity is incompatible with Judaism. Certainly incompatible with Ben Shapiro's kind of Judaism. This Christianity that hates America, that despises America, and the way that Candace and uh, Matt Walsh and that uh, Knowles despise America is incompatible. And I don't know how this is going to be the result. It's going to be really, really interesting to see how this plays out. She is taking the moral and emotional high ground here. She's trying to. Um, ben, you know, I can only imagine that professional and emotionally unhinged. Why? Because he sees the world wanting to kill him 
And they do. And he would expect his friends to rally to his side. He would expect people who, to a large extent, he made in a Daily Wire, rally to his side. And he's not getting that, right? He's not getting that. He's getting them kind of saying, well, Ben, maybe you're overdoing it. Maybe you're going over the top. All right, so then, you know, you know my feelings towards Candace Owen and so on, but, uh, but then, of course, my other favorite person out there in the world uh, Tucker Carlson uh, steps into this, and Tucker, as this is going on, says, hey, Candace, come on over to my studio. Let's do an interview. Uh, let's do an interview, right? And, um, uh, and uh, I want to show you a tiny little segment of this interview. Uh, so in it, Candace Owen, you, you know, is, is criticizes Ben and, 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 and tries to present her case but what here I find interesting is Tucker's position on all of this, which I think is super interesting and super, super stupid and super, super wrong and super, super immoral. And, and, and Tucker just goes further and further down into deeper and deeper rungs of hell in my mind, in my moral evaluation of him. So let's listen to Tucker and evaluate what he says. I, it's only 50 seconds, so I'm going to let it play out the whole 50 seconds. I won't interrupt every 10 seconds, even though I want to, I know. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about uh, what he says and, um, and why I am so, uh, why I think it is so offensive uh, and so horrific and why I think, you know, why I really am finding it hard to, 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 to be positive about the future of this country and the future of the West and the future of people who support Candace Owen and Tucker Carlson. Uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I just, I, I find it horrific. I mean, I have my disagreements with Ben Shapiro and at the end of the day, we are in completely different philosophical places, um, but he's nowhere as bad as these people are. He's nowhere as bad as these people are. And why do I emphasize these people? I'll talk about the left. And I, first of all, I talked about the left extensively in Tuck versus Bin Laden. Uh, and why do I emphasize these? Because these are supposed to be the defenders of Western civilization. These are the people that Ayn Hirsi Ali just rallied around and in a sense embraced. These are the people who are the defenders of, of the West. These are the people who are defenders of uh, the values. Who should you who should you condemn more? People who are obviously your enemy, or people who some of your associates and many people out there in the world think are your allies. I think it's pretty obvious that the people stabbing you in the back that the world thinks are your allies are much more important to con to, to 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 attack than uh, than anybody else. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is uh, Tucker. And, and you'll see, there's nothing really too horrible that he says, right? There's also, I can't help but notice that I, your views reflect mine, I would say, pretty much. I'm, I'm an American. I was horrified by what happened on October 7th. I think it was pretty strange. Um, I don't really understand how it happened, but innocents died, and that's awful. And I hated watching it. And I feel so sorry for the Israelis um, who were killed. However, there's an emotional response that is disproportionate, I think, on the part of some commentators. I mean, our country's being invaded right now by millions of young men whose identities we don't know, who probably don't even like America, and they're now living here. Over 100,000 Americans die every year of fentanyl. I've known a couple. Those are real tragedies. I've never seen anything like the emotion from any commentator around those tragedies as I'm watching about a foreign tragedy. I think that's odd. I mean, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, where do you even start? Notice how he talks about October 7th. Strange. Don't know how it happened. Basically, uh, setting himself up to present a conspiracy theory, and, and it's just a matter of time. Uh, he hasn't done it yet. He won't do it until it's the rawness of it goes away. 
But um, strange. Don't know how it happened. I mean, there's a conspiracy there, theory there just waiting to bubble out of Tucker Carlson's TV, um, uh, Twitter TV empire, right? It's just, it just unhinged right off the bat. And he says, I feel bad for the Israelis who were killed. He can't say for Israel. He can't say anything more than October 7th was strange. Not evil. Not an expression of barbarism. Just strange. Strange is so morally non-committal. So morally zero. So morally... Maybe there, were, maybe there was a good reason for what had happened. It, it's just strange. It's, it, why did it happen the way it happened? Truly sick. This is Tucker Carlson. And then he goes on to say, I don't know, the, the emotional response is just disproportionate. Really? 1,200 people? A murdered, raped, burnt alive, decapitated, tortured? And there is a proportionate response? What is a proportionate response? And these are people who, at least in my understanding, certainly not in Tucker's I know, because Tucker doesn't have any respect or doesn't have any belief in Western civilization. These are people who are part of the West. These are people who are Western who have been killed. These are people who share your civilizational values. Now, not Tucker's, because Tucker has none. And then there are people who are commenting on this, Ben Shapiro, let's say, who not only sees that as a personal affront because he happens to be Jewish, but also beyond that, also beyond that, It is, uh, you know, uh, it is then exposed into anti-Semitism all over the world and including in the United States, targeted at him in the United States. Has Tucker Carlson commented on anti-Semitism in the United States? Is he horrified by that? No. No. So it's disproportionate. And why aren't they pissed off at the invasion Maybe because it's not an invasion. Maybe because 100,000 people are crossing the border because they want work. They're trying to make a better life for themselves. Maybe that's why they're coming. Maybe that's why they're entering. Maybe that's why people are not up in arms because it's not an invasion. And that terminology is ugly and despicable and horrific. And to compare it, Yes, 100,000 people didn't cross over from Gaza into Israel. But they slaughtered, maimed, butchered, raped. Have we seen a dramatic increase in crime generated by illegal immigrants in the United States over the last year? No, crime is actually declining in the United States. Rape, murder, decapitation, burning alive. Has that increased in the United States because of the 100,000 invaders coming in? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. And in what way are these 100,000 invaders going to take over our country as invaders always do? They can't vote. It is disgusting and despicable and beneath contempt. There's no difference in terms of the ugliness of the point of view between Tucker Carlson and anybody on the left and the people in TikTok praising bin Laden. Fentanyl killed 100,000 people last year. Yeah. You compare that to rape and pillage. You compare that to murder. People take fentanyl. They take drugs of their own free will. They are committing suicide. Now, we could discuss why they're doing it and the state it's happening. But 
The fentanyl epidemic is not something caused by somebody outside. It is caused by the demand for drugs by Americans. But God forbid you can't criticize Americans unless, unless the you know, elites or Americans you don't like, like they don't have the right color skin or, or they don't come from the right background or they don't have the right religion. You can't criticize other Americans. It's always the fault of outsiders. Mexican cartels, the Chinese, they're responsible for the fentanyl epidemic. It's not the fact that Americans are demanding drugs and they're demanding ever increasing potency in their drugs. And that is the cause of the fentanyl crisis. Oh, no. And we compare that, a, a, a real problem in the United States, because we have to ask the question, why are so many people in the United States having, taking drugs with butchery? I mean, God help us from people like Tucker Carlson. He is the end of this country. And much more likely to gain political power, much more likely that his ideas are the ones that dominate our political world than are the ideas of the nutty left. Much more likely. And you can see that in the fact that uh, I just saw a story today saying that Donald Trump is seriously considering Tucker Carlson as his VP. Makes complete sense. Complete sense. I don't know that Tucker would take it. I don't know that Donald Trump would actually do it because Tucker's so popular. But it makes sense to me. This is exactly, exactly the combination that could win. That could win. And I told you a long time ago, long time ago, it's been years now, that Tucker Carlson could one day be president and he would be the devil. He would be really, really, really bad. He could, he's smart enough and probably able enough to actually implement the kind of authoritarian tendencies that Donald Trump has.